Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Studio Vasquez McKay, coming to you from Treaty 7 Blackfoot uh, Confederacy Territory here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, so today I want to do a new video. And actually, I'm really surprised that I haven't done this video yet because oil painting, I would say, is probably the closest thing to my heart. It's the thing that that drew me into art making early on um you know i was interested in photography of course drawing always drawing um and mixed media but it was really oil painting that seduced me with the the physicality and the materiality of it um so i've been you know doing oil painting i would say for for 20 plus years i'm going to say 20 years because the plus was a lot of learning which in this video i hope to expedite that process a little bit for you so I'm going to break these videos into two parts. The first one, this one, is going to cover um, what you need to know to get started with oil painting, some of the materials that you'll be using, what's in those materials. And then the second part, I'll do a little tutorial on how to get the painting itself started. So the history of oil painting. So oil painting, I'm not going to get into it too much. Don't worry. Um, the history of oil painting goes back to early Renaissance. and probably was one of the factors that opened the doors to the Renaissance that allowed some of the European painters to really explore and push the possibilities of two-dimensional art making really far. So you had Jan van Eyck and that sort of northern school starting to move away from egg tempera, which was the traditional material for making art like the Garden of Earthly Delights by Harmonius Bosch. You know, that'd be an example of egg tempera. Um, and then we're moving into oil paints, and that trickles down to the Italians who, you know, um, you know, you have the Venetians, Titian, Tintoretto, who are really playing around with the physicality of it because oil paint's able to do a few more things that a tempera can't because it holds its body and it has more of a, a sculptural quality to it, and you can retain some of the brushwork. Whereas a tempera, it was very sort of just like gouache, um, very micro application so you couldn't get these big lush brush strokes that you can with oil with having oil as the carrier so you know i know a lot of people probably shy away from oil painting because they hear that it's toxic that it's dangerous um, and therefore they go to acrylic paints uh, but i want to dispel that a little bit because yes traditionally artists would use solvents they would use uh, turpentine mineral mineral spirits paint thinners and such but you don't have to use those and i haven't been using those in my studio well since i left mexico in mexico of course i could use them because the ceilings were really high and there was a lot of air flowing through but here in canada in the winter all of our windows are closed and our air doesn't move too much so we have to be very conscious of our solvents and our use of solvents. So I don't have any solvents in my practice and I am a full-time oil painter. So what is in a tube of oil paint? Well, it's called oil paint because of course oil is the carrier. So you have the pigment, the color of the paint, and then you have oil, which is the carrier. In the case of Graham, I think they're the only company that uses a walnut oil. Other companies use linseed oil, both walnut oil and linseed oil, you can put on your salad, completely safe, right? Um, might not taste too good, but, but you can. I mean, it's a flaxseed oil, the linseed oil. Um, and then you have an extender. The extender depends on the quality of paint. So for example, Windsor & Newton, they have an extender in there because it's, uh, you know, they're, they're Winton. It's a student line. You'll find a lot of extender. I think they use quite a bit of wax as their extender. So you have less saturation of color, less pigment, more extender. Whereas Graham, it's sort of an entry level, affordable artist quality. So you get really good saturation of color. Now I've, I've brought out my cadmium yellow, just to point out that while I said that oil paints are safe, that's if you remove the solvent, but we have to keep in mind if we're using certain pigments, whether it's with acrylic, with uh, pastel, with oil paints, there are certain pigments that are toxic. So be mindful of that. And of course, if you read the labeling in the back, um, always trust what the people in California are saying because they seem to know a little bit more than the rest of us or they're ahead of us. Um, so, you know, uh, pigments like cadmium, they are dangerous right across the board. 
uh, cobalt. You know, some of those we just have to be a little bit careful of. And if you are concerned about that, when you look at the color, if, for example, in brackets it says hue, H-U-E, that means that it's a synthetic pigment and it's not going to be dangerous. So if you're concerned about that, if you're really messy and you get it all over yourself, make sure you're not using a real um, cadmium. So that's what's in your tube of paint. Uh, I know for a lot of people, they're moving away from acrylic painting. Hopefully, I try to convert all my students. Um, so the difference between oil painting and acrylic painting, I think, is worth noting. So oil painting, um, it has oil as the carrier, whereas acrylic has water. So what's going to happen is oil takes a lot longer to dry. Depending on the pigment, um, it's going to take one day to potentially three or four days. It's usually the brighter colors that take a little bit longer. And colors like your umber, the more neutral colors, they dry a bit quicker. Um, so, you know, for when, when you first start off with oils, you're going to think like, oh man, you know, like, I, I don't know if I can deal with that. But once you paint more with oils, you're going to appreciate that because they stay open for longer. So you have more of an opportunity to manipulate them, to sort of adjust them and such. Whereas if you're coming from a background with acrylic, you're used to this sort of layer over layer over layer. Whereas acrylic pa or oil painters, we like for it to stay open for longer quite often. Or we'll use different mediums to either speed it up or to slow it down. So it's nice to have those options. Um, oil painting also because it doesn't lose something as acrylic paint does, right? Because it has water, so it lets go of the water. Uh, the process of, you know, drying is oxidizing for oil paint. So it actually absorbs oxygen, therefore maintaining its shape. So if you're trying to get something that's very sculptural, that's very physical, like a Van Gogh painting, or maybe you're working with a palette knife, you're going to want oil paint because it, it holds its body. And I know that acrylic paint, you can buy all these different mediums that try to emulate the inherent qualities that you get with oil paint, but I'm telling you straight out of the tube, oil paint's gonna do it for you. So with that, let's move forward and I'm gonna share with you a few different mediums that you're gonna need for your setup, your home studio setup or prof professional setup. Uh, to get started with oil painting and just a few things to consider and a little bit of knowledge around that. And of course, if you guys have any questions outside of what I cover in this video, please feel free to message me and I'll, um, I'll hopefully share with you as much knowledge as I have. So this is my art cart. Um, mine's quite large, but it's sort of, you know, it's one of these mechanical carts that you can get sort of a garage mechanics cart. And they work great for artists because they're on wheels and you can sort of move them around and they have a lot of storage options. So you have the possibility to store your paint, to have your palette, etc. So they have usually have some sort of drawer system, which is nice because it keeps all your paint really accessible. And you can sort of see how much of a porter I am with all of my materials. And then you have lots of space for your palette and for all your paints. So the first thing that I want to share with everyone is how I store my brushes. Now we know with acrylic painting, the acrylic paint, it dries like really, really quick. But with oil paint, we have this other option where we can leave our brushes in oil. Now there's a couple of different types of oil, of course. Uh, the oil that you use as a medium, that being linseed or walnut oil, you don't want to use that in here because it does slowly dry. Whereas if you use a vegetable oil, so an olive oil, uh, any sort of cooking oil, you can leave your brushes in this cooking oil. So in this container, my brushes, they sit there sort of all the time. I mean, I clean them about once a year. At the bottom of this container, it's a little bit murky, but I have a tin can, a tuna can that I punched a bunch of holes in so that all the pigment falls to the bottom and the brushes sit in oil. Now this allows me to have a really quick and convenient studio practice because what I get to do is when I walk into the studio and I'm ready to make a painting, I pull the brush out, right? I get rid of the excess vegetable oil. I wipe it off with my rag and try to just get a lot of that out. I don't have to get super, super picky. 
I mean, this is a ranciding oil, so we don't want to carry too much of it into our painting and our painting will never dry if we have it. And there's my brush and I get to go painting right away. At the end of my painting practice, I just sort of again, wipe it off and put my brush in there. And it's that easy. So I've really reduced all of my cleanup, all my prep time to just this simple system of brushes sitting in oil. Now, how do the brushes like that? They love it because of course the hairs are sitting in oil. So unlike the traditional practice of cleaning your oil paint with turpentine, which dries out the hair a whole lot, these brushes are really happy because they get to sit in the oil all the time. So they stay hydrated and they're not as brittle and my brushes last a lot longer. And then moving down, I have of course all my paints. And then here, I have my palette set up. So with my palette set up, I like a really big palette, um, but I'm using a piece of glass. That used to be a window. And on the back side, I just painted a neutral gray so that I can see all my colors clearly. I really like the glass because I can use one of these glass scrapers to clean my palette. And you'll see I'll leave sort of the blobs of paint as they are because, you know, they're, they're you know, this was from, the, uh, from Friday, so three or four days ago, um, they stay wet. And then when I'm sort of, when I need to clean it, I just take my glass scraper and I'm able to clean up and make a little bit of room as I work. And then you can see, of course, I just create this little sculpture of oil paint on the side. So glass scraper, piece of glass for a palette, really easy setup. And with that, I also have a palette knife that I use for mixing my paints as I go. Up here, I have my oil medium. Now for oil medium, you're gonna to wanna to use either a linseed or a walnut oil. Again, for those of you who are coming from a background with acrylic paint, this would be equivalent to using water or acrylic medium. So it just thins out your paint a little bit and adds a little viscosity. So it moves around a little bit quicker. So you have that on the side. And if you find the paint is too thick or it's too opaque, you add a little bit of your medium and it'll move around a little bit smoother. You don't want to add too much of this though because it will make a very slick surface and you don't want your surface to be too, too slick because then nothing sort of holds on to the surface. Now, like I said, we were talking about a non-toxic studio practice. So there are different mediums because traditionally, what artists would use solvents for, one is to clean brushes, which we just covered. We don't have to use that. Um, and two is for a glazing medium. And Gamble in a few years ago came out with this great product, which is a solvent-free gel. And you can use this for glazing. You can use the walnut oil. You can use the linseed oil. You can use various materials for glazing. And of course, there are some that have varying degrees of toxicity. Again, I'll leave it up to you to sort of decide how much exposure you want, but there's liquid. This one's a gel. They make a different sort of um, consistencies. Grumbucker, same thing. They make these gels. So you have all these different products, but nowadays with the availability of synthetic uh, resins and such, there's a ton more opportunities for different mediums for um, speeding up or slowing down your drying time. Now I talked about the linseed oil. I talked about the um, walnut oil, but there's also a few other options. And, um, you know, there's things like, like stand oil. Uh, so I sometimes use stand oil. What stand oil is, it's just a thick version of a linseed oil. Well, it is linseed oil, but they heat it up and you end up with something that sort of has this consistency, almost like syrup. You can see that bubble sort of moving around. So it's really thick. You don't ever want to use this as a pure medium. But you can add some of this to, I've, I've added to this, these are interchangeable, I've added it to liquid, so it's sort of a leveling and a thickening uh, medium. I don't want to get into too much of the mediums, but just to give you a little bit of a taste that there are a few variations of what I've presented here that can give you different effects. Now going back to our brushes, I know that I said I leave them in there and I don't clean them for a year. And when I clean them, I do take them in my backyard and I let them sit in some turpentine for a while. Uh, and then I clean them out. 
again in my backyard because they can um, you know off gas and I'm not too worried so you can use you know I, I have this turpentine because it's required for one of the varnishes that I use but you can use just a uh, uh, hardware store turpentine that might cost you five or six dollars and you can clean out that way but if you did want to get into a hundred percent solvent free practice with your oil paint another option really great option that you can use at home is this murphy's oil soap uh, so this this is concentrated so you only need a tiny tiny bit of this and this will clean your oil br or your your painting brushes quite nicely um, if you don't have this dish soap works really good too so dish soap with some water you know rinse that out two or three times you're going to get really good results because of course dish soap is designed to break up grease and oil so that's a great alternative so you have dish soap murphy's oil soap or turpentine but make sure turpentine you're using it outside and i'm not going to get into the solvents too much but i, I do personally prefer turpentine just because it has a lower flash point than most of the solvents and it's an extract from a pine tree so i you know that just feels a little bit better than a petroleum byproduct that comes from the earth whether it is or not i don't know but i will say that if you do use solvents don't use the um the odor free ones the odorless ones because i think that's sort of dangerous sort of like natural gas you know they put a smell in it so you know when you're being exposed to a solvent I think it should be the same thing with turpentine with uh, any sort of petroleum byproduct that we use it's good if it smells because then we can be very conscious of how much exposure we have so just be really careful if you're looking and there's you know it's usually the mineral spirits that will be odorless but it is just as toxic as the ones with odor so be careful of that i don't think that they should make those products at all personally all right, well, thank you for joining. And like I said, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to answer those for you. And take a look at my next video because I'm going to do a little bit of a demo of process on how one way on how to get an oil painting started.